You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means it is time to rock out once again on your favorite. I know it's my favorite bi weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the option block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the options insider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks are binging these days. Hope you're having a fun binge. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of OBC coming at you. Yes, we had a fun time, fun little debate about ketchup and on a hot dog or not yesterday. <laughs> we'll see what you folks had to say about that a little bit later, maybe on in the show. All sorts of fun going on this week. Remember, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else on the network, throw a like, a star, a comment, a rating, a review. All that stuff in aggregate does help new people continue to discover the content. Helps us keep breaking platforms like Spotify week in, week out with our just tsunami of content coming their way. If you want even more content in your lives, and who can blame you, TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro is the place to go. When you're there, you get access to options oddities, pro Q&As, giveaways, all sorts of fun, early access. You got all of our OIC stuff way before everybody else. You got OBC for the double header. You get it the week before it comes out. All sorts of fun out there. TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro is the place to go. As we go around the horn, see who's joining us this week. Our old pal, the prima donna himself. Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management on assignment today. So if you were tuning in for some Uncle Mike goodness, I got some bad news for you. But we'll see if we can make it up, listeners, with some other stalwarts, including beaming in 
from the shores of Maine where they are hurricane free. I do believe maybe his compatriot, the meatball, he's a hurricane adjacent down there in Tejas right now. But the Rock Lobster, weirdly enough, is fine on the shores of Maine. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, a.k.a. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, how go things on the shores of Maine today, sir? It is uh, breezy. The weather has, we were, we had kind of a, we finally had a warm July. I don't think we've had one in like four years. Um, uh, and it, breezy, pretty, um, actually quite a lovely day. Shores of Maine are breezy, but thunderstorms are a brewing. Uh oh, the storm is coming, sir. So, Beware out there. Keep your one eye on the horizon, as you know you are in your vigil on your lone tower and the Giovinazzi compound on the shores of Maine. As we go now, I do believe he's joining us from Cebo East, but he could be down the street. He could be near you, listeners. Who knows? Let's find out. He is the Flowmaster, Mr. Henry Schwartz, from the aforementioned Cebo. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. How are things in the heralded land of Cebo East, sir? Uh, things are good. I'm actually not in New York City. I'm upstate because it was so hot that I could not survive anymore in in uh, Manhattan and when it was pushing 95 degrees and humid. So I came up to Woodstock and um, uh, but you know through the miracles of remote work, I can keep doing my thing. And um, it's you know it's it's an interesting uh, interesting day after what was just this prolonged run up every single day. It was getting a little boring. Uh, today we're getting a little, little change up in the action, so we'll have a lot to get into. A little bit of change up should be fun as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there. And as the Flowmaster alluded to, a bit of a weird one out there today. It's been this pretty much gentle new highs every day, kind of getting tired of hearing Uncle Mike say, never before in the history of the markets has there been a better time to sell. Pick your index of choice. It seems like it's been a new high just about every day. We just hit 5,600 in the S&P just yesterday, so just new highs left and right. And then we come in today, and you'd be forgiven for expecting more of the same. Seems like markets can do naught but go up. And then on top of that, to add fuel to the upside, the green fire, we had a surprising CPI number. CPI actually dropping 0.1% in May, slowing the annual rate down to 3% from 3.3%. It's the first month-over-month -month decline since May of 2020. So since the height of the pandemic times, first time we've seen a decline. So... All of that sounds great, right? That should be the thing everyone's been waiting for. Everyone's just keying off Powell, who we did speak this week as well. Everyone's keying off Powell and rates and inflation. CPI, a big driver in that equation. So you'd think, okay, slow in inflation. Here we go. New all-time highs again. 5,700 in the S&P. Look out above. But no, we're actually seeing, uh, looks like some folks, maybe, maybe, all that effort to buy and and lift offers, people's arms are getting tired. I don't know what it is that is crushing us today, listeners. More sellers than buyers at the end of the day. At some point, at some point, people have to get exhausted from buying this market. That's something we did talk about yesterday on Options Boot Camp about maybe setting up some hedges for perhaps what you may view to be an inevitable downturn out there in the market and how perhaps it's not quite as expensive as you might think it would be given everything else that's been going on out there and how many headlines there are right now saying the turnaround is coming, brace yourself. Uh, but we are seeing a little bit of a sell-off, a little a, a color I know you may not be familiar with, maybe a little foreign to a lot of our newer listeners, but it is red. And we are seeing uh, the S&P off over 50 handles now, almost a full percent, about 0.9% out there. Uh, still close to 5,600, about 5,580 or so, but still... Off uh, quite a bit out there. We had NASDAQ off nearly 2%, about 1.9%. The Dow managing to struggle to stay unched to slightly green up there, about 0.05%. But still, a bit of a surprising result. And then, <laughs> because why not? Uh, we got small caps just 
I don't know what the hell they're doing today. 3.4% <laughs> to the upside. I mean, bonkers, I think, is a technical definition for it. If you want a deeper dive into small caps, we did that with the folks at FTSE Russell. A few weeks ago on TWIFO, you can go check it out for yourselves, all things recon. But my goodness, I mean, this is, we talk all the time about small caps marching to the beat of their own drum. Uh, today would certainly be <laughs> a very strong example of that. I need to go check that data to make sure that is correct. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a hot day out there in uh, small caps land. All that a long way around to saying, listeners, VIX is up, up slightly today, but up nonetheless at about a 13 even when we kicked off the show. Puts it up half a point from the Monday show. VVIX also looking a little frothy, a little heady out there again, up about seven points at about an 85 right now. So back from the mid 70s range just been hanging out at for quite some time so a lot to unpack a, a lot of weirdness i think to put it mildly including a lot of madness out there in small caps i'm gonna go dig into in a little bit yeah seven handles in iwm three and a half percent <laughs> my goodness uh, a lot to unpack mr mr Flowmaster beaming in from sibo east north edition <laughs> up in woodstock a lot to unpack. We haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks, so a lot for you to break down. Uh, what's catching your eye out there in yet another crazy week and day in the markets? Well, it, it, I was saying it, it's been an, a, kind of an amazing run up, right? And uh, I think I ran yesterday, I ran the last 20 trading days. I think we had four days the S&P was down out of those 20. And, you know, you had Apple was t getting close to $130, I think. Um, just some pretty incredible moves. Uh, it's funny the you know very low volatility like really really low volatility i actually ran a screen last night i can send this to you um which basically you know we do we talk a lot about volatility skew right flat skew inverted skew um the so what i did is i took all of the single stocks uh you know so out of six thousand i filtered it down to the the, the liquid three or four hundred and basically looked at SKU, but turned it into true trades, meaning what put what 25 delta call do you have to sell to get a 25 delta put? Okay, so where where does this this 25 delta caller come from? Uh, where does it, using actual options, not just talking about, oh, this is inverted by three points or two points. And you know it, it was kind of an amazing run and and I, I was able to just put it into straight English. like you know if you look at something, uh, you know something like DraftKings, the you could get a 17% out of the money call would buy you a 10% out of the money put, right? It's meaning like, wow, if you're interested in owning that stock, that hedge, right, which 25 delta on each side, you know, is is giving you kind of the probability of getting there. Um, but the market is actually paying you uh, a credit to uh, to own that to get the hedge. You're giving up upside, but but the funny thing to me is like you're actually giving up less upside than uh, you get more room on the upside than you than you're hedging yourself on the downside, and we've we've talked about this because in the past, every once in a while, Apple would would get so flat like that that you could collar it for free, and I would usually tell anybody that I that I worked with, uh, you know, listen, if you own Apple because you're a true Apple believer, that's that's wonderful. You've obviously done really really well, but you can actually kind of protect yourself right now for no money. And yes, you cap some of the upside, but you get a downside that's really not far, not very far off. So it's been, um, you know, like, like, I mean, I was inspired to kind of run this because it's just, we are seeing more and more upside focus. Right. So, um, you know, that, that, and then that kind of comes back to this whole, you know, well, why is the VIX only, uh, you know, only at 13 ish, right? We're, you know, we're down 50 handles today in the S&P. That's actually the biggest move we've had in weeks. And it's because of uh, diversification, which is what the index is all about. And what we're in is this period where uh, you have stocks, some are going up, Apple, NVIDIA going up and, you know, GameStop too. And then you have other stocks getting hurt and the index basically doesn't do a whole lot. And that's why that's a very high level of dispersion, right? Very low correlation. And there's been a lot of, of headlines in the media about, oh, is this sustainable? This is a very... A uh, very kind of dangerous time. You have got such heavy levels of of dispersion. But you know that the kind of you know and the the positive of that is that basically it means if you're picking the right stocks, you can you can do great. Um, 
you know, it's it's we we also panic the other direction when correlation is super high because everything's going up or everything's going down. That's not what we're having right now. We're having half of the things are going up and half of the things are going down. They're all canceling each other out. So um, that's kind of the market condition right now. And it it you know it, it's and the truth is like a sell off like today. I think part of why VIX is barely moving is you know we've had such a strong run up. And I think we've we've had 35, 36 new highs this year. So for S and P and then yeah then you see it something like today in Russell, you know, where the, the small caps are up huge and the you know Nasdaq's down, that's dispersion for you. That's half the things going one way and half the things going the other way. And I think that's actually a very, very healthy sign. So, um, you know, it's, it means people need, I, you know, I, I don't know, most of the, most of the good traders I know have been at least trying to kind of whittle back some Delta or find some cheap puts as we've kind of continued to climb up and, you know, day like today, you know, that that's where that, that pays off. But, um, I, it's, 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 a, it's definitely an interesting one. And, you know, for, for long-term equity investors, it's, it's been a great year so far. Funny you mentioned that skew analysis, because we did the exact same thing yesterday on options bootcamp, just pulled it out in spy because a lot of people have been writing in about their broad equity portfolios and it's it's so crazy flat out there in spy now as well you know every headline you see is s p new record high are we due for a pullback you would think we'd see some bid to those puts yet it's it's pretty flat out there in fact we ran the numbers for september yesterday so going out a few months and you could buy i think right as we hit the new high so spy was at about 560 and you could buy the 530 put so 30 handles out in spy in september i think they were for around 320 323 something like that and you could turn around and sell the 585 calls against it for the exact same level 320 so not quite one to one it was 30 versus 25 but it was pretty damn close and just stunning for the levels if you want to get some protection on listeners uh, you can't be complaining right now in terms of just levels of skew obviously overall levels of vol are low now you compare it to realize vol Outside of days like today, we are still pretty anemic on the realized vol front. So maybe if you look at it from that perspective, the puts are still expensive. But <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, it's hard to get them much cheaper. So if you're looking for a little bit of protection, whether you're looking in like single names like the Flowmaster was saying, Apple, or you're looking in the broad indexes, uh, you could certainly pick up some protection for perhaps not as much as you would think out there. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. Obviously a, a crazy week. Look, Ford's even rallying today. I didn't know that was possible. So, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, uh, what, what caught your eye out there this week? And indeed, in a crazy day today, sir, where the numbers right now, I'm crunching them. They're, they're kind of off the charts, sir. It, it's not. It's like one of these things where, I mean, I, I saw some stats where the only other days where, where, where the Russell has done this and then the Q has done this or relative to the spy has been like, you know, like financial crisis bottom. Uh, COVID, you know, when funds are kind of like doing this huge whipsaw where they just pile into everything and then sell all their queue, sell all the momentum that was making the money. And so, and like Henry said, it doesn't, it's not producing a lot of volatility in SPY um, from, you know, from what I can see. The market is down, uh, but we're still, we're, we're only down like uh, realistically a 12 vol <laughs> for the day. So VIX is 13. <laughs> so we've been carrying this risk premium uh, for a while. So yeah, I just looked at the same thing. Apple puts are cheaper than the calls. I actually, we put on a strangle that way in uh, one of my classes. Bought a put and we bought some call spreads because the calls, like the upside calls are crazy. And I was explaining it, you know, my students, when I was a market maker, that's what I would do. I would. Um, you know, when the market's pulling back like this, you want to, you want to sell, uh, you want to sell, you want to jack up the upside for the next move, basically the bounce. So, you know, don't be surprised if you see that happening. Um, you know, and this is like an opportunity. If you want to buy right something or sell calls or anything like that, you know, you're, you're only getting this kind of tepid sell off. Um, it just looks bad because we haven't gone down much, but. Um, it's one of those things where you've got, um, uh, uh, like VIX has kind of been at this level where realized all has been so low that 
it's kind of a sneaky high even out of mid-12. And that's why you're not seeing a whole lot of response right now because, you know, so we're down 50. It's the, this is already as a move is kind of, it's priced in already. Now, if we go down 2%, 3%, which we haven't done in over 340 days, um, that's a different story. But as of right now, we don't do it. So actually, I just got to put out an alert to sell some put spreads right now <laughs> that I'm long because it's like that song says, it's now or never. Uh, so I got to put out a note really fast to get some of these things off. Uh, you put out your note while we crunch some of the numbers out here, listeners. And yes, there are some there are some serious, serious numbers to crunch out here today, listeners. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not the day I expected when we uh, when we first started this morning. It's certainly not the day I expected when we got that uh, surprising CPI number out there. So again, just goes to show you, markets can surprise you, even. Bitter, jaded folks like myself, listeners, which makes it kind of fun out there. Well, let's get to all that fun. We'll get to single names in a second. We'll kick things off right now, listeners, out there in index land. And is it a hot day in index land? Uh, the answer is yes. Let's start in VIX land. 710,000 contracts already. That number may sound familiar because the ADV is exactly pretty much that, 709. <laughs> So we're already at the ADV right now. Again, we're coming off a truncated holiday week last week, so all the ADVs kind of came in a little bit, but they're roaring back to life today. Again, just hot, hot action out there. Looks like our synthetic friend is back, the synthetic versus funky upside, doing it on a funky ratio, this time in February. We haven't seen really any size February going up in VIX, and looks like they're coming for it today. It's that Feb 18 synthetic again. Got the calls and the puts both going up for three bucks, which is uh, interesting pricing against 15,000 each of those against 50,000 of the Feb 27s for a buck and a half. So if you've been listening to Bob Hughes for a while, you know they've been on this kind of train for a little while now. Again, first time they're doing it in February. Usually they're rolling something else against it as well, a SEP or something else. I don't see the SEP leg here, so maybe they've exhausted the SEP side. Either way, though, that's right there is 80,000 contracts in our 710,000. Also got 40,000 of the 12 puts going up for 17 cents today. All sorts of funky madness afoot out there today, listeners. So should be a fun time tomorrow on Volvues. A spy no slouch. I can't remember the last time we saw a spy this hot this early in the show. Usually spy four, maybe four and a third, four and a half it's, if it's a pretty busy day. Maybe if it's bonkers, 5 million contracts, almost 6 million, 5.91 million contracts in SPY right now. Uh, the ADV, 6.6 .6 million. Yeah, that's going to go up after today. Listen, all these ADVs are going to go up after today. Uh, the S, not to be outdone, saying hold my beer. Usually one and three quarters is where we expect the S to be right now. Two and a quarter million contracts right now, listeners. So again, a hot day out there post CPI. The ADV, 2.94, going to blow through that today. Small caps, I mean, just, just buckle in for this one, listeners. Small caps, the ADV is 1.2 million. That's already pretty lofty. On a hot day, we might see small caps 7, maybe 800,000 this time of the day. Maybe if things are crazy, super crazy, maybe we're hitting a million this time of the show. 2.85 million contracts already going up in IWM out there today, listeners. I mean, just, I think the technical term for that is insane. Now let's see really quickly what the hell is going up out here. I mean, this this CPI number is driving serious paper <laughs> out here in small caps. We're at about a 210 right now in IWM listeners. We got almost 100,000 of the 210 calls expiring tomorrow going up today. Pretty much most of that opening. So got your typical one day slash zero day type players out there. Also, we got the AUG 197 puts going up 93,000 times. Wow, did not expect that. And then more of the 210 calls. These are the zero days going out today, 73,000 of those. So you add up those, you got a buck 70 actually of the 210 calls expiring in the next 24 hours going up right now. So that alone is a hot day. Nearly 3 million contracts. Uh, maybe the Flowmaster can check that for us. That I do believe that is the hottest I've seen small caps at this point of the show, maybe ever. 
I'll have to go check to see. The Flow Master is our historical data guy when Russell's not around. Uh, maybe he knows for sure. But uh, that certainly is, if it's not the hottest, it is one of the hottest days I've ever seen in IWM. And then the cues not to be outdone. Let's go. I got so excited with small caps listeners. I didn't get a chance to bring up the cues. Here we go. All right, the ADV and the Q is also pretty hot, 3.34 million. Uh, blowing through that already today as well. The Q is usually between 1.8 and about 2.2 right now. Almost double that, 4.1 million contracts in the Q's right now. So, yeah, I mean, this, this number today, the reaction to it, blow off top, exhausted bulls, whatever the hell you want to attribute this to, more sellers than buyers at the end of the day. Uh, there is a whole heck of a lot of paper going up out here in in all the major indexes, listeners. My goodness. We can spend the rest of the day just, just talking about <laughs> this paper out here. But we've got to do some single names as well. Uh, let's run a few of those now, listeners. Is it a hot day in the single names? The answer is, yeah, it's respectable. It's not, you know, 360, 370, threatening 400K, but it's threatening 300K. 295 is what it costs you to break into the top 10. That gets you to the Rock Lobster's favorite softy. They're coming for it today, 455 off nearly 11 handles or 2.3%. Unless you feel bad, though, softy still up about 23% or almost 85 handles. Just year to date. <laughs> if you go back a full year, it's up 123 handles or about 37%. So they could give up a 10 or 11 handles. Not the end of the world. Good for 295,000 contracts. And the number 10 spot today. Number nine, my old stomping grounds. Intel, 33 and a half, off about a buck 30, nearly 4% today. Good for 297,000 contracts. And the number nine spot. A number eight. Some place I just visited uh, last week when I was out in the Western studio. This is oh, SoFi Stadium. And this is SoFi coming in at number eight, 315 thousand contracts on the tape popping about 20 cents today trading 678 a little over three percent on the day good for 315,000 contracts and the number eight spot number seven the artist formerly known as facebook it is of course meta 363,000 contracts on the tape meta off 20 nearly 21 dollars nearly four percent trading 514 even again before you cry for them they're up 48 percent just year to date 167 handles. So they they have a lot they could give back as well, listeners. And today they're giving back 20, almost 21 handles of that out there. Good for number seven, 363,000 contracts. Number six, this is kind of our new kind of middle of the top 10 player here. This is Palantir. They've been hanging out there for a while now. Coming in at number six today, 466,000 contracts. 27 and a half bucks off 90 cents or a little over 3%. They've been on quite the rampage just in the past month. They're up 366 or over 15%. So they also have a lot they could give back. And today they are giving back about, oh, almost a buck of it and putting up 466,000 contracts. Number five, the newest member of the Dow, 194 and a half. It's the Amazonians off about five and a quarter or 2.61%, putting up 679 thousand contracts today good for the number five spot here comes our a tech strip listeners number four it's amd seven hundred seventy three thousand contracts they're off four and a half bucks trading 179.40 off about two and a half percent today good for number four seven hundred and seventy three thousand contracts that's not enough they were just talking about this one having some cheap puts it's apple you're going to need them today uh, two twenty seven sixty off five, almost five and a half bucks, about five forty right now, about two point three percent. Again, this one's been on the rampage, up twenty and a half dollars or nearly ten percent over this past month. Even with today's sell off, obviously they were up much more than that yesterday. So yeah, this one's been on the rampage of late. So if you want some puts, maybe not the worst time. One point two million contracts on the tape for the fruit company. That's only good for number three because here comes number two. It's Tesla. 3.8 million Tesla kind of been rarefied here now again. It's one that's been on the rampage as well this past month up, oh, 76 and a half handles or about 45%. Today, giving back 16 handles or a little over 6%, trading 247.20. Good for number two, 3.8 million contracts. And you know what the big dog is out there today, listeners. Interestingly enough, getting smoked by Spy and a bunch of other things out there today, which is interesting. Usually of late, NVIDIA's been... Uh, taking the crown, but uh, not today, listeners. It's NVIDIA. Still an impressive day, don't get me wrong. 4.92 million contracts. 
Uh, we're trading 128 and three quarters off a little over six, 6.15 percent. Uh, six and one five handles, I should say, four and a half percent. Good for the number one position out there, Mr. Flowmaster. I just ran down a bunch of volume numbers out here, uh, including the just I think the technical term is bonkers number we're seeing out there in IWM right now. Hey, anything catching your eye and these numbers I'm throwing out here, sir? Well, I will dig up to be con- to be sure if that's an all time record for. IWM volume um, looks like we're running at it very, very close at least. So it kind of depends on um, if, if things quiet down a little bit, the, but like market wide, we're on, we're on pace for almost 70 million contracts, which that'll actually put in the top five uh, of all time for the entire market. And it, it's, it is kind of mind boggling. Like you said, to, to look at the averages and go like, well, if you look at spy people might, or SPX people, uh, you know, there's something, bad is happening and then you're like oh no never mind we're up three percent in the small caps and then in the queues you're like oh well we're down even more there so uh it's a weird day for sure i mean i guess it's all it's all macroeconomic related i mean i know that uh you know small caps prefer lower interest rates because they tend to be uh more capital intensive less tech uh type of firm so i guess this is kind of a very very fast uh index rotation kind of thing. Um, but it is, it is really, you know, kind of the magnitudes that we're seeing are, are, are pretty wild and, you know, healthy, healthy volume. And then, you know, in the end to, to also have all this happening and go, well, you know, VIX is only at 13. Uh, you know, that, that does tell you like, eh, it's, you know, we're probably not, this is, we're not really going to see fireworks, but certainly compared to the way things have been for the last uh, month or two, really since that, that early, that April sell-off, it's been almost straight up you know, for May, June, and now part of July. So, um, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's exciting out there, which is nice to see in July where, you know, we, we usually kind of feel like it's going to be a quiet month. Yeah. Mid July, not usually a, a banger time in the options market. Uh, speaking of banger times in the options market really quickly, before we get to some of the odd block, uh, we have the numbers of course, for June listeners, we've just been busy, haven't gotten to them. Also we're off for the holiday last week. So uh, really quickly, we've been talking about this this juggernaut of options volume. Can it s- slow down? It slowed down briefly in March. You saw a downturn, then everything else has been off to the races. Saw another turn down again in June, listeners. 917 million contracts uh, in June. That compares to 962 million a year ago. So off nearly 5%, about 4.7%. Uh, a couple of interesting bright spots. Equity options up 3.1%. If you recall last year, Total volume and equity options was kind of flat, almost down on the year. Uh, the ETF options down 14.3%, kind of interesting. And index options, the kind of the thing that's been carrying everything for the last couple of years, off 9.3%. So perhaps folks taking a break in zero day, you know, was the start of summer. So you could be forgiven for expecting some light business. Also, interestingly enough, VIX Futures managing to uh, pull out another gainer, 7.4% increase year over year in VIX Futures. So Kind of a weird month. You got a downturn in index options, upturn in VIX futures, uh, ETF options taking a hit, and then equity options kind of holding pace if not gaining a little bit and all that all that aggregating to about 5% to the dark side. So is the bloom off the rose? We're just taking a bit of a pause. Days like today in July, listeners, make me wonder if uh, perhaps July may not be a banger. We shall see, though. Speaking of bangers, let's find some now for you, listeners. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Listeners, you heard the flow master lay it down. We're on pace for a top five day out there in the markets already. So just a, a banger, a banger day out there. A lot to be found. Uh, you were talking earlier. We've been saying this for a while now, Henry. It does seem like everyone's all in on the dispersion trade as well. Probably a lot of that to account for these, these crazy volume numbers we're seeing, especially in small caps today. Maybe some folks, like you said, rotating into that sector out there today. 
A lot of our guests on Volvo is recently coming out saying it's almost too late to do the dispersion trade now. That trade's gotten crowded for a while. But uh, interesting stuff out there. I know you've been looking at this. Uh, what's catching your eye out there on, on the dispersion front before we get into some of the individual flow, sir? Well, you know, it's interesting. It definitely has been the hottest uh, topic. I think it was on like three or four podcasts that I listened to uh, last month. A great one by Bloomberg, uh, a great one by Dean Kernot at Macro Risk Advisors. And, but what's funny is, you know, you mentioned the index volume last month was a little bit light. And I, I talked to some SIBO folks about that. And, you know, the, um, actually, it's quoting Dean Kernot. He said, you know, in some market conditions, the best hedge for stocks are stocks meaning you know what exactly what we're seeing now where you know if the index isn't really going to be swinging around very big then you know owning puts as a hedge isn't really going to do much for you right um because we just have this low correlation this high dispersion that's uh, one's just the inverse of the other so um you're right the trades you know it's certainly getting a lot of coverage uh you know what's the, there's been a lot of there's a lot of like oh well is this going to cause the next dislocation right is there going to be some sort of forced unwind that's always what people are worried about with these crowded trades you know and in this this dispersion trade is simply selling index vol and buying the component stock vol right that that is the trade and the reason everybody gets all stressed about it is because well if index vol is pretty low uh you know you're not getting a you get not getting a lot for that premium that you're selling. But as you mentioned, the realized vol has been even lower. So if, you know, we're realizing single digit vol and SPX, maybe today I'll bump us up to, you know, maybe a, a realize of about eight and a half for the, for the last 20 days. Um, so even very low vol in the index, if you're selling that, but you're not realizing anything, uh, is going to be profitable. So, and the other thing is these trades that they're, they're uh, they're not levered, uh, you know. It's not. It's not kind of like the Volmageddon kind of scenario. So I don't really see. Uh, I don't see it happening. It does seem like kind of, you know, we're at the we're at the uh, at one end of it, but it's still profitable. So people are still doing it. So, um, so that that's kind of you know dispersion definitely is the story. It kind of explains some of the softness we're seeing in in the index option business and in the ETF business because people are just more focused on the single stock, and you know the the index and ETF flow, you know, if you're using it for hedging, that's, you know, we've been talking for a couple of years about how, you know, hedges haven't performed, uh, you know, and this year, in a way, the hedges aren't even necessary. The way that we've been trading up until now, now, I don't know, you know, in the second half of the year, we could, could be a whole different ball ballgame, uh, but that's how things have been so far. Well, let's get into some of those other things right now, listeners. Let's kick it off out there in Truest Financial Corp, ticker symbol TFC. I do believe this is a newcomer to the network here. This was, if this name doesn't sound familiar to you, listeners, it's because it's a, a newer entity was formed from the merger of SunTrust Banks and then BB&T back in 2019, and the resulting Entity truest ticker symbol TFC trading 40 and a quarter up about a buck today or two and a half percent. So a good day for them on the year. Also a pretty decent year up net about 24 percent, nearly eight handles a year ago. It was trading 32 and a half bucks. Then they came for it right around Halloween. Like the rest of the market, it kind of got whaled down to 26 and a half bucks. Still crazy to me that we were a little bit shy of 4,100 just by Halloween of last year. And here we are hitting 5,600 in the S&P. <laughs> <laughs> right now so again if everyone wringing their hands about this sell-off uh just just bear that in mind out there listen we got a little bit of room to run perhaps in that direction if if we are so inclined uh but truest is definitely inclined to rally because ever since halloween has been pretty much straight up they're high for the year 40 and a half bucks so pretty close to the all-time high right now as we speak and mr Flowmaster, looks like tfc came across your radar today sir what did you spot out there yeah, this I've been in this name once or twice in the past. I don't have anything on today. Uh, I noticed one big trade, which was a buyer of uh, five thousand of the aug of the August forty two and a half calls. They paid fifty three cents for uh, five thousand lot when the stock was at forty spot sixteen. Just actually uh, about twenty minutes ago, uh, and that's an opening trade. And um, the um, it looks like they actually. Uh, might have also been a, a spread involved. But so what we have right now is a total of almost 20,000 calls versus just 1,400 puts in the name. Stock's up a buck at 40.28. And um, 
you know, this is a strong one. I looked at some of the headlines. I think it was upgraded or something recently, but it's basically near 52 week highs. Uh, doesn't seem to be impacted by today's S and P sell off. Uh, and it's just a you know pretty pretty concentrated directional trade. So total of ten thousand of these Augie forty two half calls. It looks like maybe the five thousand of them were rolled into from July thirty seven half. So just this kind of a outright bullish one. You know, struck about two dollars above where the stock is right now. Uh, I don't think it has earnings uh, in the next. Uh, oh, earnings the twenty second. So the earnings in eleven days. So uh, we've got that to to keep in mind as well. A little bit of earnings fuel to that fire as well. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you a fan of scooping up some August calls here in your new favorite regional bank conglomerate, TFC? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I don't think the region, I don't think regional banks uh, are that bad of a place to be right now. Um but I thought T was TFC where they I, I kind of thought they were a like a big kind of fund company or something like that. But um, I, I'm not I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to this. He is damning it with faint praise. He is not opposed. Listeners, <laughs> let's see if we can find something that he is in stark opposition to. Let's go out to another newcomer to the network today. Flowmaster going deep today. Uh, let's go to Gates Industrial Corporation, PLC, ticker symbol GTES, trading about 16 bucks, up about three quarters of a buck or nearly 5%. They are the global leaders in power transmission and fluid power products. All right, there you go, listeners. So th that's what they do. <laughs> Having a good day today on the year, a decent year as well, up about two and a third or a little over 17%. They were trading 1364 a year ago. Like a lot of the rest of the market, they crushed it into Halloween, got down to 1068. I uh, hit his high recently back in May of almost 18 bucks, 1798. So had quite the run from Halloween till May. Up nearly eight handles. Uh given some of that back now, down to about, looks like it got back down to about 15 and a quarter earlier this week, and now rallying back up to 16 bucks today. So about Two bucks off its highs, but also about a little over two bucks up net on the year, I should say, and off its lows up uh, nearly six bucks. So an intriguing year for GTES. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what'd you spot out here? So yeah, this is a name I've, I've never really paid any attention to. Um, and I saw a thousand lot of the August 17 half calls that looked bought for a quarter on the Amex also just about 15 minutes ago. So you can see how early I prepped for this podcast. But I want to keep things fresh. Uh, but I actually checked. It's marked late on the Amex, so I checked in with a broker down there, and he confirmed it was a paper buyer. And it actually looks like it came after a 20-cent buyer in the same thing, the Augie 17 half calls, uh, a little bit earlier, about half an hour earlier when stock was under 16. So – um, this actually, this company is funny. They make um, they make belts, like you said. But one of the one of the trends for bicycles and and e bikes is to use uh, these carbon fiber belts instead of chains. And the Gates belts is kind of like the famous one. So I actually have heard of their product and seen it. Um, you can't get your pants caught in it the same way that you can in a chain. So. Uh, on the day, we have got 2,100 calls and zero puts, and the average daily call volume in, in this name is 40. So uh, this does stand out. Uh, I don't know what somebody's positioning for, but it's 46 times the total do total volume. Stock's up you know, uh, 73 cents or almost 5% so far. Uh, not at all-time highs. Uh, there's a little bit of room there. Uh, but I would definitely keep an eye on this. I'm not quite sure what's um, what somebody's thinking, but uh, there's – there's some open interest at the November 20 calls. That's probably an old one, and also the November 17 half. So it looks like maybe a maybe a big spread out there. So uh, just an, just want to keep an eye on if um, if you're looking for a long. I mean, maybe it plays into the the Russell spike as well because you know industrial belts are sold to industrial companies, right? So maybe it's a secondary play on the on the small cap jump that we're seeing. Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, you love yourselves a little bit of machinery out there. Are you a fan here of some upside calls in GTES? Well, would you think like would this be a this feels like it's kind of takeover paper like? I mean the the year high is what around 17 and a half. Um 
and it, although this particular type of call is not my favorite purchase, you got an industrial company where it's taken six months to move a buck and you're buying calls that are out of the money. Although I will say at least going out, you know, however many 36 days, it's hard to believe there's only 36 days till mid August, but, um, you know, usually this is where these type of calls just go to die, to be quite honest. Um, however, somebody wants them, um, and there is a little bit of open interest. So, you know, there you could see a little bounce. Maybe this this whole, uh, you know, reshuffling of what funds have, uh, you know, sends this thing up another dollar. I mean, the last time the candle on this, I'm trying to see. I don't think it's had an upside candle like this all year. <laughs> Maybe the last time there was one, a 75 cent move was in was in mid February. So Maybe it's a harbinger of things to come, but it is, I would say it's a bold purchase, a bold purchase. You want a bold purchase? Let's get out of here on this one. Listen, let's go out to a name we've talked about in the past. We were kind of joking about it not too long ago saying this one was, when's this one going to catch up with the AI love? This is Soundhound AI Inc., ticker symbol S-O-U-N. wasn't that long ago. It was early this year. We were joking about it. The stock was languishing uh, in the uh, one, one and a half dollar range. And then the market must have listened to that show because uh, the market discovered, hey, this one has AI in its name. And it was off to the races out here. It got up to about 10 and a quarter. I believe it has since come back down. Uh, popping again today, about a third of a buck, trading 542. So up nearly 7% today. And we noticed a, a small amount of paper going up. In particular, where it first caught our eye was 3,405 of the July 6 calls expiring tomorrow. So one day trade, again, the stock 540 right now. So the stock's really got to move, listeners. Uh, lifting the offer for 25 cents. We went back and looked, and it turns out there's a whole heck of a lot of them going up today. A total of 33,000 of these calls have gone up today. And looking at different prices, uh, we have 25, obviously, 40 cents, 1,300 times lifting the offer. 45 cents, 2,500 times lifting the offer. A big block of the big one we talked about, 3,400. That's the biggest chunk of the day, but... There's been a ton. Uh, pretty much most of it is opening, so obviously not a lot of OI on this strike. Again, a total of 33,000. And if that's too near-dated for you, how about 55,000 of these six calls expiring next week? Uh, I don't have prices on those. Let me look really quickly, see what those are going up for. Those are trading for around 25 cents as well. So would you rather buy these six calls <laughs> expiring tomorrow or next week for about 25 cents, listeners? I'll leave that heady question up to you. But it does seem like we've got a... A volume palooza here for whatever reason out here in sound. Looking here, earnings are not till August 6th. So we've got a ways to go out here. Mr. Flowmaster, uh, did you notice this flow out here as well? And what do you think about this massive explosion of volume today? Very near-dated volume in Soundhound AI, sir. Well, it has AI in the in the name, so it must be important, right? That's all you uh, need. The, so I'm able to actually see in the July 6 calls, it definitely was a customer buyer kind of early on, although it looks pretty two-sided. Um, you know, this might be one, kind of one of those cases we've seen, right? People start buying a little bit more than they actually want and and hoping that things will uh, catch fire and they'll be able to scale out of it and kind of help pay for their position. Um, it is, it's a lot of volume. Uh, you know, I mean, we've seen the, the you know, the this... The speculative flow hasn't gone anywhere, right? Like even GME is kind of hanging in there, right? It's up on the day today, 25 and a half. Uh, haven't seen any tweets from our friend in a while, but uh, I think he might be still trying to hire some lawyers. But, um, you know, this is this could be somebody, I mean, for the $5 stock and, you know, yeah, the, the, those Julys expire, uh, you know, in just over a week. Um, I think somebody might be looking for a little, little bit of a little, little bit of action in that name. It looks like they're wearing it on the block we saw because they bought those for 25 cents when the stock was five and three quarters. So obviously it's a little over 30 cents below that now. So they are failing the first sniff test, but they have a day to go. Anything can happen and anything can happen in the rest of the show, listeners, as we get into a real quick mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. 
All right, everybody, welcome to the mail block. This is normally where I would pay off some of our polls and questions from the week, but we actually got this question here that is directed at the Flowmaster. And since he only joins us once a week, I got to take my opportunities to get the questions to him when I can. Uh, this comes from Neil, or maybe Neil S, or just Neils, plural. <laughs> Either way, he says, Hey, OB All Stars. Well, hello, Mr. Neils. He says, Found it fascinating that Henry talks so much about flex recently. It got me wondering if he's noticed any interesting use cases outside of the RevCons. Yeah, Flex has been hot. Henry's been talking about it. And then, of course, a lot of people brought it up at our OIC conversations last month as well. Everyone from every exchange was, I think I can use the term giddy about the prospects of Flex. So I did not expect that going into OIC, which is what makes the show fun. There's always a surprise or two lurking behind the corner. But they mentioned, you mentioned as well, Henry, that a lot of this use case is the RevCons hedging these derivatives products out there, these ETFs, and using them to get rid of some of their assignment risks. That is the lion's share of the use case. But a Neil or Neil S wants to know, have you seen any other interesting use cases in Flex now that you're crunching all that data as well, sir? Uh, so yeah, it's, Flex is definitely one of the big topics this year. And actually on July 1st, we rolled out functionality and trailer that you can try out, Mark. If you do to slash topware Flex, uh, you'll see the biggest flex trades, and it includes whether it's European or American style. Uh, and you will all of a sudden you'll be like, oh wow, look at that! And in fact, if you just type SWN, which is Southwestern Energy, if you type number one to see the biggest trades, you'll actually see the two largest trades, and there are flex. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited that we're that we're making it easier to see what's going on in there. And and so yes, the Revcon business is a big one. We talked about that. That's because the European style options are. Uh, much safer if you're doing a RevCon. You don't have to worry about early exercise. Uh, the other the other use cases are uh, these defined outcome ETFs, some of these buffer protect ETFs, where you you get the exposure of an index, but there's a built-in hedge, and a you know usually they they but they buy a put basically as part of the portfolio, and they sell a call to pay for it. Sometimes it's a, something a little bit more creative, like a put spread versus a call. Those strategies have gotten huge. I think the last there was a chart out by Morningstar. I think it said it was up to $300 billion. We're now in these um, these defined outcome ETFs. So that's the other thing is that way, if they need an 8% out of the money put, they get exactly an 8% out of the money put. And there's special order types that, that strike specifically on the close um, so that really they get precision there. And then one other thing that's actually kind of interesting is, is in fact, if you look at SWN, I believe um, this one's kind of a weird one. It's a 50,000 lot call spread using the 698 strike so sometimes people um just they want their position kind of separated from the listed market there's different position limits when you're in the flexes rather than the, the um the listed options um so it just it gets people exactly what they want there's not a lot of retail um there's virtually no retail activity in flex it's not available on any platforms however i do know that fidelity will will trade it for retail customers but you have to call them and i think they might have a minimum size of 100 contracts so it's not a um it, you know it is a kind of professional institutional level instrument but you know as i said just seeing the innovation and the the ease of access and transparency that you know that that is coming you know I think in in large part because of what we're doing, uh, but other you know there was even announced that a couple other exchanges the ISC is building electronic flex ex execution capability. Uh, that's kind of a big deal because really in, you know until now it had until about a year ago it had been only the four traditional floor exchanges, then the box added flex. Now you're going to have the flex on the ice as well, and it's it's pushing about a million contracts a day. So it is not – you can't ignore it, and um, it's a great question. Yeah, I'm looking here right now, firing up your new Flowmaster Flex functionality. I'm looking at yesterday's flow. Uh, looks like uh, 200,000 of the Jan 1 puts in Nikola going up. You're talking about Nikola having a size OI, 170,000 of the 2 puts in Jan. So maybe a put spread out there as well. You see a lot of RevCons going up as well. Looks like maybe a vertical in SoFi as well, the – Feb nine half, 14 half, going up 160,000 times. That's a funky one because the prices were not that, <laughs> about 50 cents apart. Uh, so yeah, some funky flow out here. It's not not all RevCons. I'm seeing the NVIDIA RevCons going up as well. So there is a lot of RevCon action, but there is also Apple got some going up as well. But yeah, interesting stuff out here. Worth a look, listeners, if you're playing around 
what the Flowmasters tools or another platform that'll let you see this stuff, as it's time for us to keep looking into the future and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, let's go to Around the Block. Uh, really quickly, it kind of as a fun aside, yesterday we got into a debate on Options Boot Camp about, is it ever okay to put ketchup on a hot dog? <laughs> I said yes, Dan said no. Uh, our audience overwhelmingly agreeing with me, 70% of you coming in saying yes, only an insane 30% of you saying no. Can nearly a 1,000 Costco locations be wrong? I ask that to you, listeners out there. Uh, but Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on this heated issue, at least here in Chicago? Ketchup on a hot dog, yay or nay? And then B, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week until the Monday show? Um, the only thing that goes on a hot dog is mustard and sauerkraut in that crazy um, Portillo's spice they put on. <laughs> so you're you're in that a hot dog is a cased meat, so it should be treated like a sausage kind of camp. Okay. I, I, I am, sir. Although, you know, a little ketchup, mustard, and onion hot dog with a pickle. Eh. Yeah, see, so you, you come I'm over to the dark side. I, I, I could come over the dark side on it, depending. But as soon as you put sauerkraut on, and if you put ketchup, you really should be banished from the earth. <laughs> it's pretty then, good, actually. Then you have a sickness you mix those that two I can't together. deal with. It can be, I mean, it's not a brat. I can see putting ketchup on a brat would be, or Italian sausage would be, a horrific crime against humanity. But on a hot yes. dog, just because it's a cased meat, very different flavor profiles. That's all I'm saying. It, it is. It is. You, you, you could make a case for it under very specific circumstances i know it's hedging of course for me but um but sauerkraut once the sauerkraut is on you're not allowed to have that because that's just that's sick and wrong all right uh what am i watching uh i'm watching the spx trying desperately to break a one percent down day with the russell desperately trying to have a four percent up day so again uh and vix is only 13 <laughs> Uh, again, alluding to what Henry's saying about, you know, you sell this one, you buy this one, you don't go anywhere. Um, uh, and we have some bank earnings tomorrow. So I think the market had got to a point where we need great earnings to keep going higher. And now we're stuck waiting until the big tech comes out. So they're going to just drip us along here. So we'll see what happens. May I, I think maybe the big tech trades, you know, softer after making this huge high until we get some comp firm from better earnings for the rip to start again. And that's kind of what I feel like ha is going to happen. But, you know, just a crystal ball type prognostication. Mr. Flowmaster, same question for you. You spent time in both metropolitan locales, New York and Chicago. So you could be on the fence on the whole ketchup on a hot dog thing. And then B, what are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday, sir? Uh, I do love a good Chicago hot dog, but of course, no, no, no ketchup and none of that weird, crazy green relish that, that you have out there. Uh, that stuff scares me. Uh, you know, we got some earnings. We got earnings in a couple of big banks at the uh, at, at the end tomorrow morning, right? Don't we have Citi and J.P. Morgan? Uh, we do. The season is well. popping off again, sir. Yeah. So there'll be some earnings fun, and um, I'm j you know as as you are, I'm just going to keep kind of trying to piece together everything that's going on in the flex world now that it's easier to see. Uh, and, you know, and, and really understand what, what trades are happening and what's, what's the motivating factor there. And if folks want to see that cool flex data for themselves, and it is pretty cool, listen, I'm looking at it right now, or anything else you and the crew are working on, Mr. Flowmaster, where should they go? What should they do? Siva.com slash RMA, and you can request a trial, and we'll be happy to set you up and point you right to the flexes. Tell them the Flowmaster sent you. Say, I'm here for the flex. What do you got for me? SIBO.com slash RMA. I'm going to be digging into this flex as well. It's an uh, it's, uh, interesting rabbit hole to go down, listeners. <laughs> and Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to go down an options rabbit hole with you, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, Optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01, my weekly profit cycles. If you want to learn how to trade, to buy puts and get the market to pay for them, uh, it is extremely popular at Option Pit. So, um, I mean, buy puts in the spy and get the market to pay for them. 888-TRADE-01 uh, to get 10% off anything you hear to hear at, uh, on this here radio network. There you go. Check him out. He needs your help. 
Because we're going to get our stock put to us in Portillo as listeners. <laughs> we, <laughs> Look at, we definitely are. <laughs> Looking a little better today. Hitting a 52-week low uh, yesterday. So good times. If you want to hear about all that fun, uh, stay tuned after Volviews tomorrow. Volviews, of course, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll be joined by our buddy, uh, the once in future, now present, Dr. Beastocks. As well as who else will join us? We'll find out. And then after that, if you want to hear the Rock Lobsters and I's tales of sadness and woe in names like Portillo's and a whole bunch of other OI that's, or I should say, unusual activity that is catching our eyes. Stay tuned for Options Oddities. After that, you can find that at theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Then we're off again for the weekend to rest and recharge for we're back again on Monday. Another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.